Words by ex-trainee, Boatswain's Mate, Company Director, Peter Booth of Perry Boys Birkenhead. Gentlemen, in my capacity, other than Boatswain's Mate, I often have to address round tables, Rotarians and others on the Cell Training Association. Ringing sincerity is of course the keynote, but now and again I am tempted to give a slightly more accurate account of life aboard. But there is an authorised version, vetted by Captain Bramley Apple, and you must stick to it. So let me talk of a hotel instead, or rather draw comparisons between a hypothetical schooner and the sort of hotel you can get for £24 per day in a lovely little Dorset coastal town. Both have sea views, but how many rebookings would the following hotel get? You arrive and immediately get abuse from the under doorman and three former guests, whose previous misbehaviour has earned them jobs as senior page boys. They make you strip and give you a smock carefully selected to misfit. You are sent to the kitchen to make dinner unless it's raining. If it is, you polish any door knockers exposed to the wind. Polishing brass is a bit easy, so you're given a little dried duraglit and a wet dirty rag. You feel like an Israelite making bricks without straw and clay too. When the rain stops, you're sent to reception in reverse order to wherever you stand in relation to the foyer. Here, all your money is taken from you, your watch, rings and passport. You are asked a lot of very personal questions and sign a paper undertaking to do everything for nothing, especially if you don't want to. You meet the manager. It is his job to frighten you before making you all assemble in the cellar where he frightens you again. He introduces the various members of the staff. They look uncommonly like screws from Wormwood Scrubs. Wrong again, they are worse. By the way, in this hotel, you are always wrong except in your worst forebodings. The assistant manager then takes over. He advises you not to go to the lavatory and not to wash. Then he details eight of you as night watchmen without a coke brazier. Next comes a meal served by six guests through two holes in the floor from the kitchen, which has a view, to the cellar, which hasn't. This is to ensure food gets cold. By the way, the room you have booked has been let to 41 other guests. There are not enough beds to go around, so two of you are tied to the ceiling. Next morning, you are made to climb up to the roof by way of the drain pipes. You are told how to do all of the work by people who clearly do not know how themselves. They cover this deficiency by talking Chinese. Ne homa, haya, chao fa. Work is a four letter word, dil. There are others. At some point, the manager presses the fire button. Whilst he and the other staff go to a place of safety, you pretend to put the fire out. There isn't one, of course, nowhere. The hotel is stone cold. He also gives a different ring and you rush to getaway cars in gear that is slightly wider than the corridors. When you struggle out, you notice that the only two getaway cars, which are not totally obstructed, are already bagged by the management. The hotel is then moved at a snail's pace forward but side to side very rapidly from a little delightful Dorset coastal town to the nearest industrial dockland site. This 
is an order to open the almost free bar out of normal licensing hour hours for the exclusive use of those who are paid by you. It also opens up your mind and your stomach. En route, the manager demonstrates his power by throwing a dummy guest out of a window and then going back and running it over. Escapees are dealt with very severely. Whilst he does this, the rest of the staff try to hit you with large balks of timber and ropes and things. A ladder is hung over the opposite side to the dummy, which in any case is stabbed repeatedly with a pole with a spike on the end and a fearsome hook. It rains again, so half of you are made to erect tents, and the other half take them down. The assistant manager appears from time to time to make sure this is done inefficiently. The screws leap magnificently into the act, shouting HEAVE! When the assistant manager says, LET GO! They also shout VAST! They must be referring to the cock-up. When you get to the nearest industrial dockland site, you are given part of your money back at a rate of exchange that makes the former pound sterling look like jelly. Worry not, the shops and boozers are always closed. For a fortnight, you may not contact home or your bird. You suffer the dreaded Hawaiian disease, Lakanuki. You can only hope she suffers the same. Wrong again, probably. You mow the lawns, make the food, clean the floors, and your whole character changes. There are six meals a day. Free down, free up. You pray for Legionnaire's disease. Too easy. It's probably an extra anyhow. If the seas are dashing over the prom, you are put in a wheelbarrow and are allowed to photograph the back of the hotel. This is to ruin your clothes on camera. At the end of your stay, you again see the manager, get part of your money back and sign a paper. You've got up at 5am, had a breakfast you did not want and hang around until the signing, which is timed so that you miss the train home. Meantime, the manager has written to your employer, who will likely fire you. You are then another stark statistic in order but the Right Honourable Menopausal Thatcher can continue as a courageous Prime Minister. She knows nothing of you, Benz. You do. You spent two weeks cleaning them. You should sue the SDA under the Trade Descriptions Act. Don't bother. They're as good as bankrupt already, so you'll be wasting your time. Is there a similarity between this hypothetical 40 towers and a 300 ton free masted topsail schooner. Can you see the manic basil? Where is Sybil? Can that screw with the 10 days growth and the fancy orange suit, leather boots, and a mad dialogue really be Manuel? You must judge, not I. Certainly, it is an asylum run by the inmates. Every schooner should carry a permanent health warning. Schooners can seriously damage your health. Not half as much as the French vino you were urged to buy by the assistant manager. Is he getting a cut like a demented coach driver stopping at CD transport cafes? You can advance though and maybe ask back as a trustee or something similar. Ask yourself. Am I fit? Nah. Come back as a watch leader then. Save for a pair of binoculars and become a watch officer. Lost your way to the station? Talk through a Mr. Weather forecast? Good at guessing? Hmm. Try the navigator. Did you fail GCSE mouse? Purses the game. Totally unfunny. The supernumerary doubles as the entertainment's officer. 
Are you good at sleeping, seasickness, and not washing? Apply as cook's assistant. Size 48 jackets, 3.5 inch hats. You could make a great bosun's mate. Megalomanica cool. Hmm, can't think of a bacon roll. Bacon? Ah, how about relief mate? Don't know anything about ships? No matter. It's known nothing about ships that counts in that job. There's no good job going as bosun, cook or engineer. Those are hanging on like grim death. And who can blame them with their talent? Of course, you needn't come back. Your character may well revert to normal. Read the booklet again. Go on, have a laugh and you'll feel, feel better. After all, like the show Mousetrap, no one must give away the plot. There must be someone you really dislike at your job centre, workplace, school or palace. Tell them it was great.